Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on arterial blood sampling. The indications to do arterial blood sampling is to test for the arterial blood gas, arterial line cannulation, which is done in ICU setting for invasive BP monitoring, serial blood gas or frequent blood taking, and also arterial blood sampling when blood is needed but venous or capillary blood samples cannot be obtained and arterial sampling is usually done under senior supervision. The contraindications is presence or potential limb ischemia or if unable to perform close monitoring for arterial line. These are the equipment needed for arterial blood sampling which are needle, IV cannula, syringe, alcohol swab, heparinized solution, T connector, adhesive tape, gloves, topical anesthesia, and blood gas sample. So we use one ml syringe coated with heparinol. This is to prevent coagulation of the blood sample. Before starting the procedure, we verify adequate collateral circulation by doing the Allen test shown in the upper picture. Then place the wrist on arm board and identify the radial pulse. Use topical anesthetic agent to reduce the pain and then clean the skin with the alcohol swab. So next we will dorsiflex the wrist slightly, puncture the skin and advance the cannula in the same direction as the radial artery at an angle of 30 to 45 degrees. Then advance the cannula a few mm further until blood appears at the hub and we draw the needle while advancing the cannula. Aspirate to ensure good flow, then flush gently with minimal amount of heparinized saline. Once the peripheral artery is successfully cannulated, arterial pulsation is usually obvious in the tubing. Connect to T connector and three-way stop cock, which is red in color, to a syringe pump. Label the arterial line and the date of the setting. Next, run the heparinized saline at appropriate rate in a syringe pump. So it is different for neonates and also different for invasive BP line monitoring. Immobilize the joint above and below the site of catheter insertion with a restraining board and adhesive tape. The complications that might occur are hematoma formation, arterial spasm, which can lead to ischemia and gangrene of the limbs, infection, inaccuracy of blood gas results, which can be due to excessive heparin in the syringe, resulting in a falsely low pH and PaCO2. Or it can be due to air bubbles caused by failure to cap the syringe. And this may falsely elevate the PaO2 and falsely reduce the PaCO2. Or when there is crying during the arterial puncture, especially in children, it can decrease the PaCO2 and also decrease the bicarbonate and oxygen saturation. Other complications include arterial venous fistula formation or nerve damage, especially if brachial artery is used. So we try we avoid that artery. Gentle reminder: the most commonly used artery for puncture site would be the radial artery. Alternative sites are posterior tibial or dorsalis pedis artery. Femoral arteries are reserved for emergency situations. And the arteries that should not be used are brachial artery because of high risk of median nerve damage and temporal artery due to high risk of neurologic complications. Also remember to check for collateral circulation and patency of ulna artery by doing the Allen test before doing arterial blood sampling. That is all for this video. Thank you.